Welcome to Ashland's 2019 Deliberative Session. I'm Bobby Horder, your town moderator. To my right is the town attorney, Charlie Smith, your town administrator, your board of selectmen, Patsy Tucker as town clerk. To my left is the budget committee, and Sandra Coleman will be acting as my assistant moderator, and she will be doing timing. Initial presentations are five minutes, and questions are three. Just so everyone knows, because today's meeting is starting two hours early, earlier than before, the date, time, and location of today's deliberative session is the sole responsibility of the Board of Selectmen according to New Hampshire state law. Everyone should have picked up your purple voting card, a voter's guide listing all the Warren articles and various other documents, uh, water, sewer, electric budgets. It's all on the back table. If there's any non-Ashland uh, visitors, they can sit over there in the bleachers. I'm, I don't believe we have any today. Just a couple announcements and we'll start. Everyone, please mute your cell phones. And I'm gonna do the same. Remember, this is your opportunity to ask any questions. Anyone wishing to speak should raise your hand to be recognized by me before speaking. When you do go to the center microphone, please state your name and have your purple voting card with you so that I know you're a national resident. Today I'll be presenting, I believe it's 35 Warren articles. Because we have so many Warren articles to address, initial presentations are limited to five minutes and Sandra will keep track of the timing and responses to three minutes per speaker. All votes will be taken by hand, holding up again your purple voting card. Non-residents allowed to speak will be the town attorney and the town administrator. Mutual respect for differing viewpoints during today's business session is expected. Now we'll begin. Article one is the roster of candidates that we'll be voting on in March. Board of Selectmen, three-year term, one position, Eli Badger. Budget Committee, three-year term, one position, Kathy Beard, David Rule. Trustee of the Trust Funds, three-year term, one position, Walter Durack, Mark Ober Sr. Library Trustee, three-year term, one position, Alice Staples. Electric Commissioner, three-year term, one position, Glenn Dion. Water and Sewer Commissioner, three-year term, one position, Alan Silly. Cemetery Trustee, three-year term, one position, Bobby Horder. Can everyone hear me all right with the mic? Everybody's okay? Okay. The first article is Article 2. No tax impact in 2019. Passage of this article shall override the 10% limitation imposed on this appropriation due to the non-recommendation of the Budget Committee. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,799,420 for the purpose of a road and utility reconstruction project on Thompson Street, High Street, and Smith Hill Road, and to authorize the issuance of not more than $1,799,420 of bonds or notes in accordance with Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize the municipal officials to issue and negotiate, negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. Because this is a bond over 100,000, it's three-fifths ballot vote required in March. It is recommended by your Board of Selectmen, five to zero. It is not recommended by the Budget Committee, three to three. And I believe someone from the Board is going to speak. Uh, I think Craig's. On Article Two? Yes. All right, what, not, not, what was I told? Craig, do you wanna come on up? Well, good morning, everyone. Um, Craig Moritown, uh, the Public Works Director. 
I guess I just want to talk to everybody about the condition of Thompson Street. Many of you um, drive that road on a daily basis, some of you don't, but you know the, the, the road condition. Um, it's pretty broken up. Uh, the road surface is probably pretty much gone at this point. Um, it's sunken in, it's wet in many spots. Um, so this is gonna help fix that, all the problems that are associated with the road. It's so brittle. Um, we can't fix it anymore. We put some cold patch down or some hot top and everything breaks around it. Um, so at this point, it just needs to be brought up to spec um, with more drainage of what it currently has. Um, some other people have asked me, why do we need so much drainage on that road? Um, and that's really just because of DES spec uh, specs. Uh, they require these drains to be put in now. Um, we can't just build a road like we used to. Uh, years ago, they would be able to build a road and just put the drains wherever you want. Um, today, we have to follow DES rules, and that's why there's so many drains on Thompson Street, Smith Hill, High Street, and it, it's, it, it is overkill, but they plan for everything, and that's what makes all the neighbors happy because you don't have water draining on your property. It's all done properly. Um, so the drains, I can tell you, we've had culvert assessments done. Um, they're all starting to sag, um, so they all need to be brought up. They're rusting away. Um, and this was all done by outside um, uh, uh, the Lake Region Planning Commission. So Thompson Street's not just the road surface, it's we're gonna fix the drains. The water and sewer department's gonna fix the, the existing water and sewer pipes. Um, just so everybody knows, we're not putting water and sewer up Smith Hill. We're not putting water and sewer up uh, High Street. Those are just gonna be the drains and the surface of the road are gonna be reconstructed. Um, so in the water and sewer, where they're replacing it, they're, they're paying that bill. They're paying that portion of the water and sewer lines. Um, so it's something that's needed. Our equipments, I can tell you this year, I've gone through two sets of plow lights on our equipments. They just get vibrated off and little solenoid valves, I've replaced them. They just get beat up. Uh, the plows get beat up and they get over oblong holes and they just can't take the road service anymore. So. It's time to fix it. Um, I can't repair it anymore. Um, it's just time to vote for it. Um, and I hope everybody supports it. It's, it's, it's time to make the town look good and uh, bring that road up. It's very highly traveled. And it's not just one road. We're doing three roads. And that's going to take care of us for a while. And once we get those done, I should be able to maintain the rest of the town with what you guys give me for uh, the capital reserve. So. We'll keep our fingers crossed, but spread the word. It's something that we need. Thank you. Thank you. Craig, you may want to hang close in case people do. Other people have questions or comments? All right. Charlie? Yeah. Well, Fran just pointed to you. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make a brief comment to everyone uh, before we get going. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, uh, I appreciate the time and effort that everyone uh, for coming here. I'd also like to thank the moderator, uh, the budget committee, uh, the board of selectmen, all of our volunteers, staff. I think what you people do uh, is a tremendous effort. Some of you are not paid uh, and I think it should be recognized uh, that your efforts help make Ashland a great place to what I like to say, live, work, and uh, play in. So thank you for everyone for what you do uh, for the town. I mean, I know we have a lot of political discourse on how we're governed, but in the end, I think everyone uh, cares about the town tremendously. So thank you for all that you do. Now, with that being said, I'm just gonna talk about the financial aspect of Warren Article 2. Uh, we were, uh, approved again into the NHDS Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, this program, uh, personally, I wish I could benefit from this uh, for a loan because the financial benefits are tremendous. Uh, being a part of this program, we get principal loan forgiveness. This project would get about 10%, uh, which would be about 179,000 uh, that we don't have to pay. Uh, we don't have to pay the interest on that, which would be about $55,000. Uh, 
uh, that principal loan forgiveness would be the first payment, so that's why the tax impact wouldn't be for a couple years. Uh, the second thing part of the SRF program, which is a benefit towards us, are the low market rates. Uh, the, this would probably be about a 20-year bond. Uh, the rate on a 20-year right now is 2.704%. Uh, comparably speaking, the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank, their rate is 3.05% on a 20-year. So, again, we'll be saving interest. Now, the last point that I can make for finance is about the, the, the tax impact. That's a, a lot of people have asked me, how much is this really going to cost? So on a 20-year bond, it would be about $80,000 a year or $0.30 cents per $1,000. If we're able to use revenue and make a few reductions, which I think we might be able to, it'll probably be about $40,000 a year uh, impact, if not less, which would be 15 cents. 15 cents on our tax rate to basically do Thompson Street project. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think we're Um, the first thing is, uh, I think it's misleading for Article 2 because it says no, t no tax impact for 2019, which is true. But I think you also need to tell the people that there will be a tax impact in 2020. No, you need to tell them on the Warren article. When people vote on this, they go in. I had many people call me and say that they were going to vote yes because they thought there was no t tax impact. The other thing is, Charlie, um, I was going to say something here. Um, it, it's at a dollar nine, like you had told us. You gave us the paperwork. No. You changed it. I didn't change anything. This is the paperwork you gave us, and it yes. said a dollar nine. A dollar nine is on a five-year note. We're not going to do a five-year note. So, twenty-year note is thirty-four cents. Okay. So you're going to do the thirty-year one. Twenty. The twenty-year. Okay. Because that doesn't say that in the so, Warren Act. So what the budget committee, when she's talking about what the budget committee asked was, what would they be the tax impact based off of the the rates because through uh, SRF you can get a five year, uh, a 10 year, a 15 year, 20 year, and they actually do go up to a 30 year bond. Most banks uh, and lending companies don't go up to a 30 because by then the road would be completely depleted. Uh, so those are different options. Five year, it would be a significant a lot more uh, for us to pay. So we were thinking probably a 20 year. Thank you, Charlie. All right, Fran, and then we need to take some questions if people have questions from the audience, because this is three presentations. Um, just want to reiterate a couple of points that, that have been made and some things that I've heard around town. Um, first of all, these roads need to be done. They've been at the top of the critical list for years and have been independently verified, as Greg said, by the LRPC. So it's not just a wish, it's an, an absolute need. Um, and eventually we will be called to task on it. And despite claims that we could do this more cheaply um, than following the engineering guides, please understand that you're not allowed to build roads like this without them being engineered. That's something Craig assured me of. Um, and so we're required to follow those plans. We've talked about doing it in stages, but it's probably double the cost. When you think about the cost of building such a major road, a lot of it is staging. You have to bring in equipment. If you have to do that twice, you've added significantly to your costs. Secondly, with all of the drainage, which is a major problem with these roads, it's not just the pavement or the, the, the potholes or the frost heaves or the other plethora of, of problems with it. We have drainage that comes down from the hill, from all the hill, and erodes the road. So drainage is essential. So that all needs to be done in order to keep this road um, in good shape. Um, also that the water and sewer lines have to be done. And it's to, to their benefit, to our benefit, that they do it all at once. Again, bringing in extra equipment could definitely add cost if you had to do it a second time. 
DES is becoming more and more involved, given that it's along the river, they're going to insist that we fix this drainage, and they're going to insist that we fix this roads. And the longer we wait, the more strict the regulations become. Um, please know that the engineering has already been done and paid for three years back. That work will expire in another two years, as will some, some easements. So time is of the essence. It's not going to get any cheaper if we put this off. Now, I understand the cost is high. Our taxes are high this year. I mean, I feel it as well as everybody else. But the cost of doing nothing is much higher. We incur costs each year now, as Craig already pointed out, money that he has to dump into his equipment. And the board is committed to work with DPW, with the Water and Sewer Department, and with the Electric Department. We understand that there's going to be some costs involved in putting in the polls. We're going to work with them to ensure, uh, to the best of our ability, a win-win for everybody. Um, so that we can keep an eye on the, the impact of the tax rate. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? S Sandra. I'm going to sit today because my knee is bothering me, if you don't mind. Uh, I don't disagree with anyone who has, you know, gotten up and has talked about Article 2. But what I disagree with is doing it all at once. And I know that what has been said, that doing it in stages does cost more. But if you look at the tax rate and what we pay today, 34 cents, this is just one article, but if you take 34 cents and you apply that to your taxes, that's going to be a significant raise in your taxes starting in 2020. And if it's a 20-year note, that is going to impact every single year for 20 years. And what is going to happen to all the other articles that are on this? you know, warrant for this year. We have 34 warrant articles. Not only that, next year you're going to have more warrant articles and it's going to go on and on and on. Your tax rate is not going to go down. I can only see it going up. Unless we take undesignated funds and use that money to reduce our taxes. And it takes approximately $260,000 to reduce your taxes by a dollar. And that, that's very important. It's very important to know. So I would like to see these roads done, but I would like to see them done in stages, even though it may cost more. I don't think we can afford that, not in this town. Thank you. Jane. Jane. Jane Sawyer. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, first, do we know if this will be a fixed or a variable rate loan, interest rate fixed? Um, on the principal loan forgiveness, is that guaranteed? At what point does that kick in? Is it at the end of the term or is it as we go along? Yeah. At the what? And it could be up, how to, so there'll be a one-time loan forgiveness or is it as you go along, one time? And the decision as to when to take that loan forgiveness will be made by? Well, they told us it could be used towards the first payment. And that's a choice the Board of Selectmen would make? Yeah, yeah OK. Um, that was it. Thanks. Jeanette. <coughs> Madam Moderator, I have an amendment to Article 2. I'd like to make a motion. No, I've had mine up. Okay, Kathleen, you go next. Then I'll hear the amendment. Kathleen DeWolf, this is uh, in response to you about the in stages. Uh, the public needs to know that DES permits are time sensitive. Once you start a project, most of the conditions that you must complete it during a specific time frame. So they're site specific and within a time frame. Once you put your shovel in the ground, they give you X amount of days to, to uh, finish the project. 
So if you start and stop, my understanding is you may have to you may have to uh, request a new permit, which then incurs more costs. And DES permits are very, very expensive. So you try to get, you put everything, including the kitchen sink, in a DES permit so you can get all your permitting done in a time frame that you can manage and meet all specifications. So doing it in um, sections is not efficient and is not cost-wise. Thank you. You have a comment to her? Okay. I agree with her, but the only thing that I do not agree with is that I'm not asking for a road to be started and not finished. This is a project that takes in three roads. One road at a time can be completed, and then you can start the next road and the one after that. I'm not asking, I mean, I know that there are people that don't agree with me. I can see them shaking their heads and smiling, but we have to think about our taxes, and we have to think about whether or not we are going to be able to afford it. And I don't think we can. 34 cents on a dollar is a lot of money, and you haven't addressed any of the articles. And there's no tax impact this, this year, but there will be next year. And there will be more warrant articles. And that's where it's going to hurt you. You need to take a road at a time. I don't disagree that they need to be done. I just did disagree with doing them all at once. Thank you. Okay, I believe Ms. Stewart had a, uh, an amendment. I did. Oh, she's good. I'd like to uh, make an amendment to Article 2, and the reason I'd like to make this amendment, I think it's very misleading to the town when it doesn't tell the tax impact. Uh, you know, it looks like, well, there isn't any tax impact, so don't worry about it. So I would like to amend Article 2 uh, at the top to read, 2020 estimated tax impact is 34 cents. <laughs> the townspeople should know that that's a tax impact. Right. It says estimated. Okay, I have a motion uh, to amend the Warren article, and it was seconded to amend it to state, and I talked to the attorney. He said we can make that amendment, but it's not clear what loan they will get. So I believe her, uh, Jeanette's amendment was up in parentheses where it says no tax impact in 2019 to also say 2020 estimated tax impact, 34 cents. Now I'll open it up since I've had a motion and a second. Now I'll open it up for further discussion on this particular amendment. Jane. I'm just wondering if, if we should clarify that that's assuming it's a 20-year loan. If they go for a shorter term, the impact could be more. So do we put the span of the ta possible tax impact? Good point. I don't want to make it too confusing. I think it should be simple. The main thing is I just want people to know, yes, there is a tax impact. Yes, in 2020, your taxes are going to go up. So I think if, if we add too much to it, then it's going to be confusing to them. So I think this kind of just gives them an idea that there is going to be, you know, a tax impact. Okay. Charlie. 
it would be difficult for us to put an estimated in, uh, tax impact on that because the, as the article says, it's to negotiate. Well, we don't know what we're gonna negotiate yet to get to a final number. As the estimated tax impact on the other articles, you can see there's a solid number for the appropriation. Here, you, you know, by the time we finalize this, the interest rates could be higher or lower. Uh, the selectmen could say they want to do a 30 year to lower the tax rate. It's difficult for me to put an estimated tax impact without knowing what number we are working with. And uh, again, that's why the article says to negotiate. Uh, we're just asking for you to allow us to negotiate this, and then we can determine what it's going to be. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's that? I, I, exactly. So the estimated tax impact could change because we could use more revenue. I mean, discussion we had last year was using the block grant, which would lower that estimated tax pack even further, reducing our capital reserves, uh, which would lower the tax impact even further. So it's just difficult. Not that I don't agree with putting one there or wanting to, but we have a range, and to get a solid number would be a challenge. Okay, I have to recognize people that haven't spoken yet. Can you please go to the mic? All right. Sherry Downing, part of the Budget Committee. What disturbs me about this whole Warren article is no one's actually mentioned what was brought up at the budget hearing that the, uh, the utilities in this Warren article are not included in those monies. There is no utility monies in that Warren article, and if you're gonna put and change your tax rate and discuss all that, you've gotta remember that the utility company doesn't have any money in this Warren article. So that's an extra added cost, which is deceiving because it says it in your Warren article that it's utility and. Um, it says, the purpose of road and utility reconstruction project. We were told at the budget committee hearing that the now superintendent hadn't even been contacted on this. It was the previous superintendent that they had given the paperwork. Now I realize this Warren article has been on and this is the third year, but people need to know if you're gonna change it and put a tax rate in there, that that's not all the money you need. Okay, thank you. Right now we're talking, that's pertinent to the article, right now we're talking about the amendment. Does anybody else have any comments? I think we've gotten different comments. Can you go to the microphone, please? State your name. Susan Harville. I, I, for the amendment, I think if, since we don't know what the tax rate will be, since we don't know the type of loan or the duration, I think we should have the amendment read that there will be a tax impact beginning in 2020 for the duration of the loan. Okay, well Thank that you. would be an, uh, we already have an amendment on the floor that we're talking about and your amendment Right now, the amendment that we're speaking about is to add up at the top of this Warren article, after it says no tax impact 2019, the amendment we're speaking about should say to, is proposed 2020 estimated tax impact of 34 cents. That was made and seconded before we amend that according to the way I believe it should progress. So unless someone has something new to add to that particular amendment, I believe it's in line to vote on this amendment. Oh. First, you need to withdraw the First Amendment. That's just the way it goes. I'm sorry. I'm just following the rules. And then, and then, okay, reword it. So the First Amendment has been withdrawn. The second is withdrawn. Now, what is your amendment? 
State your amendment. The amendment will say there will be a 2020 tax impact for the duration of the loan. Is that correct, Susan? Okay. It probably should say for 2019 because we don't know if the um, Board of Selectmen will approve the loan forgiveness for the first year or not. But from what I understand from Charlie, the payments aren't going to take effect until 2020. Correct. Okay. Then 2020. Thank you. Okay. I agree. So now the amendment on the floor on Article 2 is to place up at the top of the article, 2020 tax impact will be for the duration, we, that doesn't make sense, 2020 tax impact for, for the duration of the, it's your, it's your, beginning, beginning, all right, is that what she wrote down? Sorry, I'm just following the rules. So, so we all know what we're doing here. Beginning 2020, there will be a tax impact for the duration of the loan. Is that correct? Correct. <coughs> okay, so we're just talking about that particular amendment. Does anybody have anything new to say on that particular amendment? Beginning with 2020, there will be a tax impact for the duration. We don't know if there's a tax impact for the duration of the loan. Well, this is, this is, uh, okay, I, 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 okay, they could. I'm not going to, I'm going to, uh, this is what's on the floor right now. We can vote on it and say yay or nay. Okay, okay, shh, shh. Okay, we are, everybody, this is the amendment, beginning to Article 2, beginning 2020, <coughs> tax impact for duration of a loan. Use your purple voting cards. Those in favor of this amendment, raise your purple card. Those in favor of the amendment, raise your purple voting card. Okay. All right. And those opposed? It appears it passed. Does anybody want to count? It looked like it was. All right. Okay. Um, are there any other? Comments on Article Two, Lisa, uh, and you get in line next, Mark. Lisa Rollins, was that seconded? Who seconded it? Sandy. Okay, we can't hear back there. You guys have to okay. use the microphones. Please. Okay, all right. And I can't get to my. Okay. All right. That's great. That's going to be good for two hours. Okay. Go right ahead. Rick Perret, I'd just like to make a comment that this is your third attempt to push something 
whether it's a die need, a necessity, or a want, or a wish, but the people are not going to vote for it if they don't know what it's going to cost them. You know, my tax bill is a little over a half a million dollars a year. You know, 34 cents doesn't sound like a lot, but every, every year you people, we as a group, let's put it that way, we as a group add two or three dollars in additional war on article spending. So now we're up to a, 20, uh, what, a $27 rate. The people aren't going to tolerate this anymore. You know, it's not a stupid idea. That's what I just saw up in, oh, that's stupid. I saw that in three or four lips up there. If it's a democratic process in this book and on your rules that say, you know, no booing, hissing or anything like that, I don't expect to see any expressions of discontent on the other side up there. Thank you. There's, nobody in, this, there's nobody in this room here that spends money till they know how much it costs. It'd be the same thing as all of us get down to Irwin Fords right now and just sign up for a new car. Let's just get down there. We're not going to ask the interest rate. We're not going to ask the price of the car. We're not going to ask the impact of what it's going to cost. We're not going to find out what it costs us to own that car to the town when we pay a town tax. It's crazy. You have to, you have to define these things so that people understand exactly what the cost is. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chuck. Uh, my name is Dave Toth. I'm the chair of the Water and Sewer Department. I have two comments. One is that um, as far as water and sewer goes, we are paying about $380,000 as part of the road cost to replace water and sewer. Um, the sewer lines are old. There is a, a, a large infusion of storm water into those lines, and every time it rains and every time we have that infusion, it costs you money. Um, we are replacing the water lines. These are some of the oldest water lines in town. The water quality uh, for people on Thompson Street needs to be improved. The lines on that street do not go straight up and down the road. Part of the lines go into people's property because when they put them in, they avoided, uh, they avoided some ledge. So if we have a main break on people's property, that's going to cost you a lot of money and it's gonna cost the department a lot of money as well. Um, you may have noticed, but the road's not getting any better. Um, it's not gonna get any better if you don't do anything this year. Um, in fact, it's gonna cost you a lot more. If you stage it, um, staging, I believe, in the, in the contract is about $200,000. That's pretty close to the the 250,000 that Sander was talking about in terms of reducing your taxes. So you may save money this year. You're not going to save money next year. You're going to pay the extra 200,000 next year, so you've lost. You've got to take a long-term perspective. And one of the reasons we can't come up with the cost is that you're not buying a car here. We are buying a road. It is a complex engineering project. The town over the past few years has put together a lot of money in the unassigned fund balance thanks to the department heads and the select board and that money can be used to reduce the cost. We can also use money from the state highway grant which is about $50,000 also to reduce the cost. In other words, we have a lot of flexibility here to do this road, get it done, um, and not incur tremendous long-term costs. So this is a case of, well, you pay me now, or you're going to pay me a lot more later, and you're going to have to do the road no matter what. So you have no choice. The town has no choice in doing this road. It has got to be done. So it depends on, do you want to pay for it this year, or do you want to pay for it in the future? OK, go ahead. Someone new. Uh, my name is Amanda Loud. Uh, now that this is a very public issue with the road, it's, this will be the third year on the ballot. Uh, the state is aware of this. The town selectmen are aware of this. Citizenry is now aware of this. Should someone be in an accident on one of these streets? Um, is the town now up to get sued because we as a town did not correct this issue that's very public and apparently everybody knew about? Secondly, 
uh, with the runoff issues um, that Mr. Toth talked about, could an individual living around those streets, should he or she incur severe uh, catastrophe or, or, or damage to his or her property on these streets? Does that now open up the town as well to be sued by that person because, I don't live on any of these streets by the way, um, because the town knew about it and did not act? I just wonder what our future liability is in this. I can't, I can't answer that. I'll refer to the attorney. I'll try to answer that as, as best I can. First of all, can the town get sued? Yes. The town can always get sued for just about anything. The question is, can it be successfully sued? Uh, the RSAs 231.92 and statutes following that basically say that a municipality can be sued for deficiencies in its highways or sidewalks only if there is a specific notice to the town of, of a specific deficiency and the town fails to do anything. I don't think warrant articles and you know highway department folks coming up and saying there are problems with the roads would be enough. There has to be a specific pothole or culvert or something that the town has no, written notice of and and then the town has to fail to do anything about it and set up a plan to to fix it. So I so I think an, a, as a general view the town can't be sued just because there's a deficient road it has to be something very specific and then that specific defect must be the cause of, of the injuries. Hope that helps. That was informative. Who? 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 Sure you can. Go right up. I understand we just heard of it from water and sewer, but is there anybody here from the electric department or is that not impacted by any changes to this road? Does anyone from the electric department want to speak? Sandra Coleman, I'm chairman of the electric department. Do you have a specific question that you would? Well, it does say, as Sherry pointed out, that it claims to be the purpose of road and utility reconstruction. So that does look like utility is included in this amount. Now, is the electric department also, in is that included in this, or is that going to have to have its own budget? No, Jane, it's not included in the Warren article. And I asked this question at the Budget Committee and also at the public hearing. What happened was three years ago, um, an engineering firm, you know, did the engineering for these roads. And at that time, we had a different superintendent. And I did not know anything about this. I said that I would find out, and I did. We still have all those plans, but today we have a new superintendent. And I've asked if he would not be contacted so that there would be some type of communication between the select board Excuse and me. him. Could, could he sit down for a minute? I'm having a hard time moving, hey. seeing her responding. You're blocking that. Thank you. Uh -huh. And uh, so when I asked for this communication or this conversation to take place, I did talk to our superintendent yesterday. He has not been called, has not been notified. Now we still have those plans, but from my understanding, there would be a number of poles that would have to be moved. I asked if, you know, if he could give me a rough estimate on that. We're talking about anywhere between Two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that could be added as an added expense. So that is not included. In it this is not problem. included in the warrant. Okay. okay does um, that answer your question, Jane? Yeah. The only uh, I only have one other two extra small ones. Okay. Um, first of all, Craig's presentation I thought was great. He gives uh -huh. us information without making us feel like we don't have a choice. I feel when and other individuals speak, such as about the DES permits, you can always get extensions on those. It happens all the time. I just don't feel like we should be bullied into feeling like we have no options here. We're all on the same team, okay? We want to accomplish what this town needs. I think friendliness would help. Thank you. 
Thank you. Craig? I'd just like to um, comment on the polls. I have personally spoken to Steve Foley, um, and he may not have told you, Sandra, um, but he said that there is about 30, 33 polls in question. Uh, they have to be moved back from the side of the road. Now, people have been up Thompson Street. These poles are already beyond their lifespan. There's open wire on Thompson Street. It needs to be the, the uh, covered wire <clears throat> that's all coated. Um, so I've talked to Steve, and he told me about $1,000 a pole to $3,000 a pole to, to replace these poles. Now, it's a little more if they hire JCR to do it or, or some other outside contractor, but they have the people to do this. Um, they could start t this spring. They need to be done anyway. They're very old. They're 50 years old, some of them. $3,000 times 33 is not $250,000, and they can do this work themselves. They could hire it out. I realize they have more work to do. We're available to help them with traffic control, digging, and everything. I'll help them. I'm sure there's other departments that will help them, but they need to be removed. That, when we have power go out on Thompson Street, it affects the entire town because it shuts the whole town off. And when we had that last ice storm, not the last one, but one of the storms three months ago, mm -hmm. that's the reason why you lost power in the whole town of Ashland was because of Thompson Street. They're the oldest power lines in town, some of them. So it's, it's not even just this water and sewer, it's the electrical lines too. Let's, let's fix what we need to. The, water, uh, the highway department will help out the electric department whenever we need, whenever they need it, we're available. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. All right, Lee, Lee, stop it. Okay, uh, Sandra, do you wanna comment on the electric poles? I did not know that, um you know, Steve had talked to you, Craig, and I do agree with you that in talking to him yesterday, he did say that the poll would approximately, talk, you know, cost about, you know, $1,000 a poll. And yes, a lot of those polls need to be replaced. But the infrastructure in the town is not only, it, it's bad. So it's not only Thompson, Smith Street, and those three streets. We need to take one at a time, and to replace all those poles is an expense. It's $1,000, but there's added expenses onto that. There's easements, there's a lawyer, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that go into this that have not been mentioned. But I do agree with Greg that it is $1,000 a pole, but are all of them bad? No. And to replace them and to put them further out you cannot use the same wire. You have to use different wire. And if you're going to do that, there's another type that you can use, which is Hendrix cable, which is more expensive. And that, that's also for the future, but why waste the money today, put old wire on instead of the new wire? I could go on forever, but I don't want to. I mean, we're still on Article 2, and I believe this is important. Okay. Rick, I'm assuming you're standing in line to speak. Rick Perry again. Um, I guess I will tell you that I do know the difference between buying a car and building a road because I've been in the road building business for 35 years, so I understand that. What I'm, what I'm trying to make the point of is that we haven't marketed this well at all. These 30 people sitting here all have questions. What about hopefully another four or 500 people show up at election time to cast the ballot? Well, if there's this uncertainty, I'm going to consider this the educated community because they're the only ones that actually came out today to try and solve issues and problems and, and get through this warrant session. We need, to, we need to regroup. You people need to regroup the individual departments. They need to put this on a piece of paper. It has to be A, B, C. Lay it out to the people. Yeah, there's a need. I don't think anybody's done. I'm certainly not denying there's a need. You know, I don't go up and over Thompson Street. I understand the homeowners that are suffering because of water and drainage issues. Yeah, it's become time to address those situations. But you can't just throw it out on a warrant article and say, well, we're not sure what it's going to cost. Well, there's different parameters that it could be. You need to define the project. It's $2 million 
plus by the time you get out of it you're going to spend another five you're already looking for another half a million dollars to cover the incidentals that may or may not come up you need to define the project exactly how it's going to go we need to know all the options that are available for the people so they can intelligently vote the people aren't going to deny this but they want to know where their money is going to be <laughs> spent thank you very thank much you. katie did you have a question yeah. or comment Katie Marr, um, my understanding is that Fairpoint owns half of all of our polls in town. Is that correct? Fairpoint owns 50% ownership of every single poll in the town. Is that correct? What do you mean by ownership? That we, ha we share ownership of all the polls with Fairpoint. Yeah, like they own 50% of every poll, we own 50% of every poll. Uh, not, not, no, not all, no, not all of them. <laughs> but some of them. Some, yes. Okay. So are any of those polls up on Thompson Street? I can't answer that question. Okay. I, my, because my, I my don't question know would answer. be, would we contact Fairpoint if there was an opportunity to leverage their ownership to help out this outcome a little bit? Somebody should at least talk to them. You know, Katie, I, I agree with you, but let's go back to what Rick just said. We need to pursue this a little bit deeper. You're asking questions that I have no answer to and I don't know whether they do or not. Rick, Rick said we need to do more of our homework. D does anybody else know for sure if any of the Thompson Street polls are Does anybody? Point? No? Okay. No? Okay, thank you. Good question, Katie. It is a good Um, I think we should consider, and I don't know if we can do this, can this be amended to remove the words and utility? Because this is misleading that p voters are going to think this amount includes all water, sewer, and utility. Mm. It's not a number. That's correct. It doesn't um, include electric. While she's talking, if anybody has an amendment to offer for anything, there is a um, clipboard here that has paperwork. Yes, if you're willing to make that a written motion, the attorney said that that would be legal because we're not. Right, no, 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 no. Right, right here. Right here. So my question is, with the utilities, is it or is it not an appropriated amount, which is the difference in the wording here that we I know we all pay our utilities some of us don't do water and sewer um, but you keep lumping it in that it's going to affect the tax rate if the utilities are involved and if it comes out of utility funds they are not appropriated is that correct thank you it is on that one though because it's the I'm just waiting for Jane to. Uh... Can I ask Katie's? No, because that's not. All right. I get. Well, but this is the mo. This is her motion. Okay, her motion is. If people want to follow along, Article 2, I'm not going to read the top part. To see if town will vote to raise and appropriate sum of 1799420 for the purpose of a road construction project on Thompson Street. Her, her motion to amend is removing the word and utility. So it would be for the purpose of a road construction project. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, so now I have a motion and a second to remove the wording and utility. Now we'll discuss that. Mardine? Mardine Badger. Uh, I think people are using the word utilities somewhat confusingly. There are actually three utilities, water, sewer, and electric. 
I believe I understand that the cost of the electric pole process is not included in that amount in the warrant article. However, I do believe, if I'm wrong, please correct me, I do believe the cost of the water and sewer part is included in the warrant article amount, but will be paid for by the water and sewer department. So, the, so s some of these amendments and some of the discussion, I think we're getting confused as to what we mean by utility. We need to be clear. Thank you. Any, uh, all right, Sandra, and then we'll vote. I would like to answer Katie's question because I just found that out. <laughs> is that I, I'm in talking to Steve, as far as the polls, you had brought that up, and yes, we own every poll. Okay, okay, now we have to stick with the amendment. Patsy? I'm going to speak in, uh, against the, um, the amendment because, as, for, as uh, Mardine said, <laughs> The $300,000 for the water and sewer part of the project is part of that $1.7 million. So you can't take out utility because it's included in it. The electric department is not, but utility water and sewer is. Am I correct? Okay, David, to the, uh, address the amendment. Yes, I want to, uh, uh, just to clarify a point, this is an F. SRF loan from NHDES for stormwater. Okay, that's why we're that's why we're allowed to, to do the road um, because of the stormwater issues that exist there. In other words, it is a water and sewer. The reason we're getting it is because of water and sewer, not because of the road. And the changing the electric pole is really not part of the, the stormwater issue. That's why it's not part of the loan as I understand it. Thank you for clarification. Okay, Jane, because it's your amendment. So would it make sense to amend it to say that it only includes water and sewer? Because I assume if you're talking electrical, it doesn't include uh, air, uh, internet, telephone, and all that either, right? So utility is deceiving. So should we specifically state road and water and sewer? It's your amendment, so I, 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 uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't. I, Good I answer, can't, Bobby. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't tell you how to. Well, I would uh, like to amend my amendment then to state and water and sewer reconstruction. Okay, first you need to rescind your previous. What you just dropped your, but that's okay. I can't amend amend. All right, you, I withdraw. Okay, and okay, she's withdrawing her second. Now you're going to amend it by removing the word utility and putting water and sewer. Okay. Do I have a second? Jane has made the amendment. Sherry Downing has seconded it. Again, I'm not going to read the entire thing. Now it will be to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate. $1,799,420 for the purpose of a road and water and sewer reconstruction project. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. That's the af affected part. Is everybody clear on what that is? Sandra. Before we vote on this, I would like clarification because it, it involves utilities. If this figure of 1.799 million includes water and sewer, those, that comes from ratepayers. So if part of that 1.799 million includes their figures, then I believe the taxpayers are going to pay for this as well. So I, I don't, if you put 1.799 million in this warrant article and water and sewer is in there all, the, the rate payers should pay for that, not the taxpayers. It's, it's, con, it's confusing, I'd like clarification. Okay, Mr. Mr. Charles, do you wanna clarify that? And then we're gonna move on to the subject of the, of the motion. 
Yes, water, water and sewer is paying for its portion, which means that it's being paid for by ratepayers and not taxpayers. Then why okay, thank you, thank you. All right. And let, I can anticipate your question, Jeanette. Um, it is likely that this will impact water rates. The cost of this will impact water rates. But okay. it's not likely that it will impact sewer rates. Okay. Thank you. All right, Jeanette. My question is, David, you said it will affect water rates. Well, then you're affecting the town twice because it's going to affect their water rates and it's going to up their tax rate. So I, I'm a little confused as to why, why it would be both. Well, it's both, Jeanette, because the taxpayers pay for the road portion and the ratepayers pay for the water and sewer portion. The taxpayers are not paying the whole one million seven ninety nine. They're paying three hundred and eighty thousand of that is water and sewer is paying for. So that means that the town is paying for one seven nine nine minus three hundred and eighty thousand. So the taxpayers will pay that portion, the ratepayers pay the 380,000 portion. So then it's why, split. Then why is the 1,799,000 uh, listed in the Warren article if the taxpayers aren't going to be paying it? I didn't write the Warren it? article, but that's the total, that's the total amount of the loan. All right. My understanding. Thank you. Charlie, do you want to come? Uh, do you have a microphone down there? Well, we need to have the people in the back be able to hear. Our articles are reviewed by legal counsel in Department of Revenue, uh, and this is, they advised us to write it like this. I initially did have that before, but they said that, was, that wasn't the way to write it because it's still a total appropriation. Like take Warren, take Warren article number two, even though there's no tax impact, you still have to raise and appropriate. So we had to consolidate to raise and appropriate the full amount. Thank you, Charlie. It sounds to me like okay. you're us. All right, now, now I'm going to go back to Jane's motion because we now spent over an hour on one article. Okay, the motion is... The motion on Article 2 to see if the town will raise an appropriate one million seven ninety nine four twenty for the purpose of a road and water and sewer reconstruction project. The word being removed is utility. And we received a second on that. If anyone has any new information or statements to make, Otherwise, I'm going to move for a vote on, I'm going to not move, I'm going to call for a vote on this particular. Sandra, is it new information? It's a new question. Is it pertinent to the, uh, to the amendment? Yes. Okay. Because you All mentioned right. utility. Okay. okay. I would like, um, personally, I would like, um, the lawyer that is here to give us his interpretation as to the $1.799 million and the term utilities, whereas to me it's maybe my terminology is wrong, double jeopardy, because in that $1.799 is the 300000 for water and sewer. So therefore, if that is passed, it's going to be 34 cents if we use 20 years for the taxpayers to pay that when the ratepayers are paying already water and sewer. Giving us to the attorney. 
I don't know how these amounts were arrived at, and, and maybe Charlie can help us on that, but the 1.799, are we saying that includes 380,000? And the 34% impact is based upon the 1799? Okay, so maybe the, maybe the, the impact should be less than that if the ratepayers are paying. The, th uh, the 380, and uh, you know, I'm not a resident. I'm not. I have no vote here. But you might want to point out, if if it's the case that of the 1799, 380,000 will be paid for by water and sewer. You may want to add that add that to the article so the voters are fully informed of that. And and so, and and does that mean you still need to borrow the 1799? Okay, that was good information. Is this pertinent to the motion? Yes. Okay. All right. I believe it is. Ann Lamson, why don't you include the electric instead of fighting about all this? Why don't you do your amendment for the meeting to include the electric so we know what the real item is and the real bill is? Okay. All right, we have to concentrate on the motion on the floor or we're going to lose track. The present motion on the floor, unless someone has something new. Very briefly. Anytime this, t this town has also gotten a grant, and I think this applies to the loan as well, you are required to put the full amount. So if you get a loan, if you get, if you have on a warrant article, um, to accept a grant that's 50-50 uh, or an 80-20, you have to put the full amount of what it is. So, and with the realization that if it's a 50-50, half of that would be recovered by getting the grant money when you completed the project. So I think it's the same here, that the total amount had to include the entity that was getting the DES grant, which was water and sewer, which will be part of the, re the payback of this amount, this total amount of what the loan is. Okay. Fran, is it pertinent to the, I'm not talking. Just one more <coughs> clarification. They've been, you've been trying to pin down a tax impact for 2020 or 2021. Part of the reason we can't pin that down is whatever payment is due in any given year, you subtract what water and sewer is going to pay. So the, the amount that the town pays is the only portion that's taxed. So don't say that the 34 cents is on the, the 1.7. It's minus whatever water and sewer has already put in. Am, am I correct? Thank you. OK, again, we're going to be uh, voting on the, on the motion on the, Jane's motion on the floor. Again. Article 2, to see if the town will vote, vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 1799420 for the purpose of a road and water and sewer reconstruction project. We are removed, the motion on the floor removes the word utility. All those in favor of the motion removing word utility inserting water and sewer reconstruction project, please raise your purple cards. Okay. Those opposed? No opposition, the motion passes. So now the article will remove the word utility and replace it with the words water and sewer. Are there any new comments on Article 2? Jeanette, new <coughs> comments. I have a question, and I'm, I think the attorney would be the one that would have to answer this. Because of all the not knowing the answers, the ifs, the ands, the buts, is it this, is it how many years, is it possible for us to vote to eliminate 
the Warren Article 2 from the warrant this year and put it in next year? No. No? Okay. No, it's, that's not, that's. Yes. No, she's moving. She's calling the question. We're going to vote. Do I have a second to call the question? Rick Perret. Second. Call the question. We're calling the question. We've, talked to We've now discussed Article 2 for one hour and ten minutes. I have a motion to call the questions. It means to move the question. The Article 2, we're voting on it. To move the article, is that? Am I understanding you correctly? Okay. To move on to the next. Yes, the voters vote on it. But to move to move on to, because there is amendments on this article, I have to do this this way. Article two. I am not going to read the whole thing. No tax impact in 2019. Then beginning in 2020, tax impact for the duration of the loan is added. Still, the passage of this article shall override the 10% limitation imposed on this appropriation. Then I'm jumping down to the body to see if the town will vote, raise an appropriate one million seven ninety nine four twenty for the purpose of a road and water and sewer reconstruction project. All those in favor of the article appearing on the ballot, as it's been amended today, please raise your purple voting cards. Thank you. And those opposed? Article 2 will appear on the ballot as amended today. Article 3, no tax impact. To see if the municipality will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 500,000 gross budget for the construction and equipping of a new septage receiving station and to authorize issuance of not more than 500,000 in bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize the Water and Sewer Commissioners to issue and negotiate, negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon. Three-fifths ballot vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee, 5-0. And do I have statements or questions? Mr. Toth. I'm sorry, I had a uh, PowerPoint presentation, but it stopped working while it was sitting here and I can't get it going, so if you bear with me. I did, hand, I did make available the uh, Waterworks uh, newsletter, which basically explains the need for the loan. I, w I would begin by saying it, the, the Warren article reads up to 500,000. Um, we don't really want to borrow that much if we don't have to. Uh, this is in addition to the $1.5 million loan that was approved last year. And the reason that we're asking for the 500, the additional, or the ability to borrow an additional uh, 500,000 is that um, we've had additional engineering and construction costs and we will, we may need to cover potential cash flow issues. Uh, there's no impact to on tax rates or water rates. This is a sewer project. There will be no immediate impact on sewer rates. There could be an impact on sewer rates depending on how the future commissioners decide to uh, decide to do their accounting and, and pay for this because part of the station has to do with processing town sewage and part of it has to do with septage receiving. Um, septage receiving basically pays for itself, but they may decide that they want to raise the rates to cover the town sewage portion of this. Um, the operating costs and most of the capital expenses will be paid from septage receiving, so all future costs will be paid from revenues generated by the station. 
Um, over the past three years, we've generated a little more than $1.4 million in revenues. Um, last year, uh, about 517000 This year, 507000 So our, our revenues are fairly consistent. The additional costs have come in part from things that we added to the project after, after we got into the design phase. One of them has to do with upgrading the supervisory control and data acquisition system, which they refer to as SCADA in our industry. And this is the, this is the electronic monitoring and protection system that we have for both our water and sewer departments. Um, when we had the engineers come to uh, design a system for the septage receiving station, we found out that the, the equipment that we use for the water station is totally outdated and needed to be replaced in order for the whole system to function. So that was about $141,000 in addition to what we had asked for. Um, the steel building cost about $25,000 more than we, than we had uh, originally estimated because of the steel tariffs. Um, we are also, uh, as we were doing the engineering, included um, bypassing the grid chamber on Collins Street. Um, and that's going to run another 25000 or so for that. Um, we've had increased engineering costs, especially in the, the cost of the engineer to monitor the project. That uh, that, with additional mon uh, engineering costs for the other projects, has increased the price of the, the, the station about 200000 And we anticipate an additional 5% in construction costs uh, because we have moved construction from last, last fall to this coming spring. Now, in terms of the cash needed, um, we have about $1.1 million on hand. That was before we paid $100,000 for the building yesterday. Um, and if we do take out a five, if we do just take out the $1.5 million loan that we already have, um, at the end of the project, we'll have about $500,000 in cash remaining for all of our other operations. If we do the Two billion dollar loan. Um, <clears throat> uh, the cash owed at the end of the project will be about five hundred thousand, and we'll have about nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars left um, for uh, left at the end of the uh, project for our, all of our other operations. Now that sounds like we'd have a lot of money left over, but the problem is that. During construction, we may, we may uh, run into cash flow situations. Um, <clears throat> uh, we, are, we hope that we've engineered this thing as tightly as we can, but you see already we've had increased, increased costs um, due to construction, uh, uh, due to engineering changes, and we, we don't know whether there'll be any uh, engineering uh, uh, construction delays. Um, some of the monthly payments during construction projected by our engineers will be greater than $200,000. Um, and the other problem we have is that the Northern Borders grant that we have has repayments of those have been delayed because of the government shutdown. We don't know whether the government's going to be shut down again. And that amount is about 220000 So we have about $100,000 due to come back from them, and we haven't received that yet. OK. Um, just to give you an idea of, of how our cash flow works, septage receiving, as I said, brings in over $500,000 a year, but only $180,000 by June. And the same is true of water and sewer revenues as well. They're, they're very low in the beginning of the year, and it takes us a while um, as, as the seasonal changes for our revenues to pick up and, and catch up with our expenses. Um, I couldn't go into this very deeply in five minutes. It's very complex. 
We are having a public information session on February 26th of this year at 6.30 p.m. at the Water and Sewer Conference Room in, on 6 Collins Street, and we will go into this in much more detail at that time. Thank you, Mr. Tuff. Does anyone have any uh, questions or comments? Jane? My only question is, um, I noticed that um, in the explanation after the article, it says including Thompson Street. So this is a loan to borrow for Thompson Street. That's, uh, it's kind of confusing. I see that, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Including. Um, those, are, those are other expenses that the department may incur this year in addition, in addition to the expenses for the septage receiving station. So that's why I put that, put that in there. OK, Sherry. Sherry Downing. Um, so with the article that passed last year and then the 1.5 million that you were awarded by the state in August, did you include that in that part? I don't, if you did, I, didn't, I think I missed that. So then it would be equal to about 3 million you've already inquired or Okay, Mr. Toth, do you because want to your, answer? Your warrant last year passed. passed. And then in August, in the paper, it said that the state awarded Ashen 1.5 million in finances a sewer project. So what, so it comes out to that now another 500,000? That's On top of this one. Yeah, Just to I, I think I said that Last year, we were, we were, the town voted or approved the $1.5 million loan. Correct. That loan was awarded to us in August by DES. They've already approved the additional 500000 if the town votes to, uh, votes to approve that, um, in part because they're part of the delay that's costing us additional money. Um, so, 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 the so the total, the total, we could borrow up to would be two million. And as I said, we don't want to borrow, we don't have to borrow that much. We only want to borrow or use what we need during the, during the, the project. Okay. I, I th uh, does it mean that you got that grant money that the state awarded, that it said in the paper that you got? 1.5 million? Yes, that was, the, that was the money that the town that, voted okay, approved okay. It's last year. It's last one and year. the same, thank you yeah. for clarifying. Yeah. Okay, Patsy. Uh, Pat Tucker, I have an amendment to um, to read uh, to authorize. I, I, my feeling is that the water and sewer commissions don't have authority to borrow money, so I want to have it to read to authorize the Ashton Board of Selectmen to issue and negotiate such bonds and notes and determine the rate of the interest thereon. Because. Okay, your amendment is to author at the at the tail end to authorize to authorize the Ashland Board of Selectmen to issue and negotiate such bonds rather than the Water and Sewer Commissioners, correct? Correct, Patsy. I was just rereading that. Yep. Correct. And Lee Sharp's uh, seconded it. Does anyone have any questions on that amendment? Sherry? Sherry Downing, knowing that fact and knowing that they couldn't do that, why wasn't it written with the BOS doing it that way in the original Warren article? I have no idea. My assumption is that the water and sewer, okay? Right. So I guess we, I, I'm saying we've run into this before. Is it correct that commissioners do not have the authority to uh, negotiate <laughs> bonds? I think that that's probably correct on that, but I'm not 
Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you want to? Uh, all right. She's she uh, she's keeping with her motion. So, do you have any question uh, comments on the particular motion on the floor? Amendment on the floor. Okay. I have an amendment, and it's been seconded. To in Article Three, about four lines down, to authorize the board of select the Ashland. No, she's she did not she did not take that advice. She's keeping with her motion if I understand it correctly, correct? To authorize the Ashland Board of Selectmen to it'd be helpful if I could could have some silence up here from the board of I can't hear what I'm <coughs> to authorize the Ashland Board of Selectmen to issue and negotiate such bonds. That's the motion we're talking about. It's been Amendment, I mean. All those in favor of that amendment to this article, please raise your purple cards. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my fault. Discussion on that particular. All right. I'm sorry, Mardine. Got ahead. Mardine Badger. I was just looking at the wording in last year's warrant article. And it said to authorize the Board of Selectmen and Water and Sewer Commissioners to issue, et cetera. So included both groups. Okay. And Patsy? I would amend my article to include both. I would amend my And are you taking All right. The amendment now reads to authorize the Ashland Board of Selectmen and, did she say and? And the Water and Sewer Commissioners to issue and negotiate such bonds. Any further comments or discussion? All those in favor of the amendment to authorize the Ashland Board of Selectmen and the Water and Sewer Commissioners to issue and negotiate such bonds. Please raise, signify by raising your purple card. Okay. Those opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Is there any other comments on Article 3? You have a comment? Sandra? <clears throat> I was reading this article, and I'm also on the budget committee, and I realized and I think I'm right, but I'll ask the budget committee members. According to RSA 32.5-1, it states, after the public budget hearing, no new purpose or amount can be added to the proposed budget unless that purpose or amount was discussed or disclosed at that hearing. And I don't ever remember this article going before the budget public hearing. Any other comment? Jeanette? Just speak on um, The public hearing was the 10th, and if I'm right, Charlie, I believe those warrant articles were turned in on the 14th, the afternoon of the 14th is what you told me. They were not there the 10th when we had our public hearing. The budget committee did not have a public hearing on the 14th. The budget committee had a public hearing on the 10th. January 10th. Okay. Any other comments? 
All right, Sherry. Sherry Downey. Actually, I'm on the budget committee also. This is the paperwork and the Warren articles that we reviewed and went over that night. This Article 4 is not... Hold on. We're not talking about Article 4 yet. We're Article 3. Oh, I'm sorry. We're on Article 3. We're on Article 3. We're not on Article 4. So is there further discussion on the amendment to the Article 3 motion? I mean the uh, Article 3 amendment. Yes. Was it? Was it? Uh, uh, oh, did we, did we vote on the amendment? No, because I started to vote and I hadn't opened it up for discussion. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Remember, so Mardine okay. pointed out. My question I didn't. Was I, I didn't think that okay. we had voted because I started to take the vote and we hadn't discussed it yet. All right. I believe we still have to vote on it. <laughs> okay. All right. The amendment, Article Three. Yeah, we did. We did vote on it. We did vote on the amendment. Yeah. All right, so Article 3, if anybody doesn't have any further comment. All right. Article 3 was. Yes, Article 3. Article 3 was. Article 3 was Yes. Yes. So Article 3 will appear with the amended wording on the ballot. We, they said we already voted on it. <coughs> she said that's all we need to do. I thought we needed to vote on the article if it's good. Because it's an amended article. Okay, good point. We're going to, all right, all those in favor of Article 3 as amended, please raise your ballots. And the other word. All those opposed. It's going to appear. All right, Article 4, no tax impact. To see if you miss an out, municipality will vote and to raise and appropriate the sum of $75,000 gross budget to evaluate the long-term viability of the wastewater treatment plant and to authorize the issuance of not more than $75,000 in bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize water and sewer commissioners to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine rate of interest. Three-fifths ballot required, recommended by the Board of Select, 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee, 5-0. Now, I'm going to make a comment. I'm not going to make a comment. I'm going to read the law. Preparation of the warrant is the responsibility of the select board, and they may insert additional articles of business right up to the day the warrant is posted. However, RSA 32-5 prohibits adding a money article, that is, a purpose or amount of appropriation to the warrant unless it was disclosed or discussed at the budget hearing required to be held prior to the meeting, meeting being this deliberative session meeting. The paperwork that was handed out at the budget committee's public hearing did not include Article 4. I'm just pointing that out to everybody. Any, any additional comments? And I'll ask the attorney what that means. Sherry? Yeah, I guess my question, because I am on the budget committee and my Speak paperwork. into the microphone. And my paperwork that I got that night um, on the 10th, Article 4 is the general town budget. Um, we did not discuss um, anything about this 75,000 water and sewer treatment plan. Um, I was not in town after the meeting. They did have a vote one night when I was not in town. Um, so that's why it's five to zero. Um, but RSA 32 colon prohibits this actual warrant article to be on the ballot because it's a money or money warrant. Any other further comments? I'm gonna. All right, Jeanette. I believe Bobby is correct on this. 
We had the public hearing on the 10th, the Budget Committee did, and this Warren article was not on the warrant then. We did not have it. I called Charlie later on, and it came in on the 14th, and we had a meeting on the 17th just to vote whether to recommend or not recommend it. So the attorney would have to answer the question as to whether it's legal or not. I'm going to correct. I can't answer this question. The attorney's going to have to answer the question. All right, much better. I'm still confused. Um, in that, what I'm looking at on, on your warrant says the budget committee voted 5-0 on, on to, to recommend this article. Is that correct or, or incorrect? All right, I'm going to have the chair of the budget committee answer that question. Um, we did not vote on it at the public hearing on the 10th because we did not have it. So after Charlie received it on the 14th, he let me know on the 15th, and on the 17th, I held a quick meeting so that we could vote on those one. I, I see, okay, so there's an extra meeting in there, okay. So was the meeting on the 17th your final hearing? It was not a hearing. It was not a hearing, it was just a meeting. Okay. But this was not in the packet at the public hearing. Correct. And it says the governing body or budget committee shall not thereafter insert an additional amount of purpose which is not disclosed or, um, or discussed at that hearing. So I don't think it should be uh, on the warrant. Um, if there's any doubt about that, you can put it on the warrant. And if it turns out the voters pass it, then somebody's going to have to opine on whether it was valid because it in violation of this provision. But you, so you well, have, you when have, I was uh, preparing for my job as moderator and I was going through all the Warren articles, all of a sudden, Article 4 is there. The old Article 4 that was given at the public hearing was the town government. It was a different Warren article. Right. So the, I went through, and this was not in the packet. This okay. Warren article was not discussed or disclosed at the Budget Committee public hearing. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, right. You can, you can, you can leave it on the warrant if you want, but DRA, DRA is going to disqualify it, or you can vote to eliminate it for the reasons uh, that have been pointed out. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? I would like to make a motion to. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to eliminate Article Four from the warrant. She said to eliminate it because it was not discussed or disclosed. Yes. According to thirty-two point five. Okay, I am going to open this up, this particular motion, amendment to remove this for the reasons stated to the public. Anybody have any questions? I see no hands. Okay, Sandra. My question is, because it was not disclosed at a public budget he hearing, and we're an SB2 town, can we not have a public budget hearing between now and March? No. Too late? Too late. It's too okay. late to have another public hearing. <coughs> well, Correct. I thought I'd try. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, we can't have the time has run. Okay. 
We're voting on amendment to article. I'm going to mark four. The motion will now be as stated. To eliminate article four from the warrant, from the town warrant, because it was this particular warrant article was not discussed, discussed or disclosed at the budget committee's public hearing held January 10th, 2019, pursuant to RSA 32 5-1. All those in favor of eliminating this from the warrant, please raise your purple cards. All right, and those opposed. The article four will be eliminated, according to the vote today, will be eliminated from the wa uh, warrant. Article five. Estimated tax impact is $11.31. Shall the town of Ashland raise and appropriate as the town general government operating budget, not including appropriation by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein totaling $2,832,844. Should this article be defeated, the operating budget shall be $2,779,788, which is the same as last year, with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Ashland or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, 10, and 16, to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only, recommended by the Budget Committee 6-0. I do not have a Board of Selectmen recommendation. I don't know why, but that's Article 5. I thought it was your budget. It's town of Governor. Oh, oh. All right. Do you have a question or a comment? And go to the microphone, please. Thank you. My name is Rebecca Hartley, and I would like to know what they were going to use the extra money for in the budget. Are you talking the extra money between the regular budget and the um, proposed budget? And the, you mean in the def in the uh, default? Is that what you mean between the default? Why there's a difference? Yes. Okay. Someone from the town want to? Um, one of them was a raise for the uh, employees at the library because, I mean, they just don't get paid what they should and they did a good job. But um, it's, it's all different things in the budget. It's not one, one particular thing. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Sherry? Can I make a motion? Yes, you can. What's your motion? Speak into the microphone. And you need to write it down then. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to decrease the um, budget to match the default budget, which is 53056. Okay. I want the numbers to match. Okay. You know what I mean? I want the and write to that be down. the same as the default budget. Write it down, and uh, it, do I have a second? I'll second her. All right. Sandra seconded. While Sherry's writing it down, her motion is to amend Article 5 by having the regular town general government operating budget be 2 million, decreasing it to 2 million 779788, which will match 
the default budget of 2,779,788. Is there any questions or comments on that amendment? Fran. This is not the BOS budget. Ours actually was a little higher. This is the Budget Committee's budget. Um, we all work very hard, uh, both the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen, to manage this town. Costs rise each year that are out of our control. A significant part of our budget are salaries over which we have very little control. A lot of them are union negotiations. Contract costs go up. We work very hard to ensure that we um, manage within our budget and to just arbitrarily cut. And again, the budget committee worked very hard. They made some cuts. They, they raised a couple things, but they made a lot of cuts. And, and we've all worked very hard. And to just arbitrarily take an amount out of the budget really negates all the work that's been done and it ignores all of the factors that go into putting together a municipal budget. The amount of tax savings is minimal. This is not the way to cut taxes. I just think this is very short-sighted and arbitrary. Any other comments or questions? Sherry? Uh, Sandra seconded. I believe Sandra seconded, okay. Okay, Sherry. Well, this is for, no, 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 this is, we're making sure it was seconded and it was. Oh, Go okay. ahead. Do you um, have a comment? No, I, I'm not just pulling a number out of my hat. I've been on the budget committee for, this is my third term. Um, I just think that uh, it can be sliced down. There are a few lines in the budget, and we know that it's a bottom line budget. There are some lines in this budget that have just been put in that the, have been on warrant articles for years that haven't passed. And this year they're just in there as certain things. If you want me to read all the line items, I will. But I, I didn't just come up with this number. I came up with things being on the budget committee for six years. And yes, I'm only one person on the budget. So where you see that two or that one, more than likely it was me saying no. But this budget has been a little bit stacked in areas, my personal opinion. Um, but if people want to go through it line to line and see where things have been added, like I said, that have been on your ballot for years that were defeated, are now in your budget uh, on just lines. And you're okay. talking five grand and All right. I was going to let Ann speak first. Ann Barney, Park and Rec Director. I see, I see the Budget Committee voted six to zero to accept. You're on that committee? Um, it says six zero. Um, and I can say, as one of the department heads, we're not trying to pad the budget. This is what we need. My department, if I have more kids, it's gonna cost me more to run my department. The difference, $59,000, less than $60,000. It's not a big impact. This is what we need. We're not trying to get extra. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby. All right, Fran. You made a comment that things are on the budget that have not passed. I can tell you categorically that anything in the budget has been passed by the town. We do not put things in the budget that have never been approved. All right. uh, Chief Randall. Chief Randall Ashland, Police Department. I'm also a taxpayer and a resident of this town. I think if you change those two numbers to match it, defeat the purpose of the Warren article. The Warren article is there for the people to make the choice on whether this is what they want to give us to run our departments or that is what they want us to have to run our departments. If you change the two numbers to match, you're forcing people that there is no other choice. And we're here voting as a democratic society to choose the way we want to run our town. Correct. Thank you. Good point. Jeanette?
Um, I've lived in this town many, 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 many years, and I love the town. And I'm the first one, and Fran knows, Fran and I have talked about things, and we get along great, and, but I also want to say they did an excellent job on the budget this year. The selectmen did an excellent job. The budget committee did an excellent job. As I said, I'd be the first one to cut if I thought it was necessary. So I just think we should leave the budget the way that it is. I believe it's a 2% increase. Uh, the, the selectmen worked very hard. Not only did the selectmen, but the department heads. The department heads are mainly the ones that have to deal with this budget because they have to run their department correctly. And if you want the services and you want them to run their department correctly, then this is what we need. Are there any new comments? Then I will move forward and we will vote on the uh, amendment to the Article 5 motion. The motion, the amendment we're voting on is to decrease the town general government operating budget to 2779788 to match the default budget of 2779788 that's what we're voting on right now as an amendment all those in favor of this amendment please raise your purple cards those opposed the motion is defeated so article 5 are there is there further discussion on article 5 Go right ahead. Uh, Charlie Bozzello, I think it would be just a little clearer if we could state um, in this article, um, after it says uh, set forth therein totaling 2,832,844, comma, an approximately 1.9% increase over the current year budget. I, I think the percentage number puts the change in, in some perspective that I think is, is easier to appreciate. Are you making that as a motion? I'd, I'd like to uh, make a motion for an amendment. You need to write it down. Do I have a second to, to add the percentage? And you seconded that? Yes. All right, I'll check with the lawyer. Is this language set by law? Can he make that? Is that a... He's going to check. The attorney is. It, I believe what you're talking about is letting the people know percentage-wise what the difference is, if I understand you correctly. Okay, so while he's writing and we're getting the names of the people, I have a amendment on the floor to, af to add after 2,832,844, comma, representing, did you say 1.9%? Approximately 1.9% increase over 2018 budget.
Okay, the attorney has let me know um, their specific wording according to the law of the state of New Hampshire for these types of warrant articles. It says it shall state it specifically the way it's written. He, the attorney said if we add this, what you're suggesting, and, and we're going to vote on this uh, amendment, if it went to court, it probably wouldn't invalidate it. It's just giving the people a little bit more information, representing it. So with that said, from our nice attorney here today, the, we're going to be voting on the amendment to read the opera, the, therein totaling $2,832,844, an approximate 1.9% increase on the current year's budget. And that's been seconded. Now we're going to vote on that particular amendment. All those in favor of that, raise your purple cards. Okay, and all those opposed? It looks like the ayes have it. So that will be included. Are there any other comments or additions? All right, Article 5 will appear on the warrant as amended. Article 6, no tax impact. Shall the town of Ashton raise an appropriate as the Ashton Electric Department operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations, voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $3,254,040. Should this article be defeated, the operating budget shall be $3,204,185, which is the same as last year. With certain adjustments required by previous action of the town of Ashland or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 4013.10 and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. Recommended by budget 6-0. Any comments or, or questions? Seeing no hands, Article 6 will appear on the ballot as stated here. Article 7, no tax impact. Shall the town of Ashland raise and appropriate as the Ashland Water Department operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session for the purpose set forth therein totaling 239,189. Should this article be defeated, the operating budget shall be 271,665 which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the town of Ashland or by law. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Recommended by the Budget Committee 5-1. Any comments or questions? Seeing no hands, Article 7 will appear on the ballot as it's presented today. Article 8, no tax impact. Shall the town of Ashland raise and appropriate as the Ashland Sewer Department operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth here in totaling 480935 Should this article be defeated, the operating budget shall be 456366 dollars, which is the same as last year, with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Ashland. Recommended by the Budget Committee 5-1. Do I have any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing no hands, Article 8 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 9, estimated tax impact, 44 cents. To see if the Town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $107,789 for the second year payment of the four-year lease purchase agreement for the fire department fire engine as authorized by vote on March 14, 2017. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee 6-0. And I believe Chief Heath is going to have some comments. Steve Heath, Fire Chief. 
taxpayer, resident. Uh, this is the, uh, sec actually the third payment. The, when the truck was ordered, there was an initial down payment to reduce the overall month that, uh, amount that was, uh, uh, you know, for, for the loan. And so actually this, this is the third payment that will be made. Uh, we are, and, and then next year after that, we'll be able to finish it off uh, paying for the truck with the capital reserve. And hopefully le there'll still be some money remaining in capital reserve uh, as they prepare for the next truck down the road. Thank you, Chief. Any comments? Thank you. Article 9 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 10, estimated tax impact 11 cents. See if the town will vote to raise an appropriate $27,142 for the second payment of the five-year lease purchase for the Public Works loader. Board of Selectmen approved, I mean recommended 5-0, recommended by Budget Committee 6-0. Any comments or questions? Seeing no hands, Article 10 will appear as presented. Article 11, tax, estimated tax impact, two cents to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,391 for the final payment of the four-year lease purchase of the transfer station mini loader as authorized by vote on March 10, 2015. Recommended by your Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee 6-0. Comments? Fran. Referring to all three articles, 9, 10, and 11, these are all for first, second, or third final payments. Um, understand that if those payments are not made, the equipment has to be returned. We lose what we've already put into it, and um, we are without the equipment, and we've already, we also incur tremendous costs of returning these vehicles. So I, I know that at least the fire department seems like a large sum, but sending it back would cost the town a whole lot more, so I urge you to vote for all of these payments. Thank you. Chief Randall. Chief Randall again. Um, this is just kind of a general question because we eliminated one of the Warren articles. And now I normally write on the Warren articles that I support a letter to the editor. And I need to make sure that these Warren article numbers, are they going to stay the same or are they going to now be adjusted? That's now a, number 11 becomes number th 10. That's a very good question. I don't have. They will be adjusted. So can I. I follow up with. Yeah, thank you so very can much. I, can I follow up, then will there be new Warren articles for people to pick up with the, new, with the adjusted numbering? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Any other comments on 11? Very good comment. Article 11 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 12, to see if the town uh, estimated tax impact, 41 cents, sorry. See if the town will raise and appropriate the sum of 1,000, I'm sorry, 100,000 to be added into the road improvement, big difference, into the road improvements capital reserve uh, fund established in 2012 for the purpose of repairing roads. Recommended Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by Budget Committee 5-1. Any comments or questions? Yes, Fran. I just want to point out on this article that for the last several years we've had this article at $125,000. The board took the action of reducing this to $100,000 with the, the knowledge, the full understanding that our tax rates are high and you know we're hoping that, that this money can be used for Thompson Street. We tried to cut some of these capital reserves with consideration for your taxes and the impact that they have on it. So I just wanted to point this out. We thank the town for its generous contributions, especially for this Warren article over here, because this is going to allow us to keep our streets in good order, minus Thompson Street, Smith Hill, when that's, this is not going to cover that. But once that's done, our capital improvement plan set forth several years ago will ensure that these funds keep our roads safe, up to date, and in good shape so we don't ever have to go through this major construction again. So again, we urge you to keep contributing to this fund. It's, it's paid off and it will continue to pay off. And I just want to point out that we cut it. Thank you for the additional information. Anybody have any other? 
Article 12 then will appear on the ballot. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Sorry. I didn't see you. I was originally supposed to speak to these um, capital reserve funds. I just wanted to point out um, that Article 12 through 19, these are all your capital reserve funds that we expend every year, and it represents $103,000 that the Board of Select has cut from the budget, or I'm sorry, out of the Warren Articles from last year. Um, if you go through the numbers, um, there's substantial cuts of 25,000, 20,000, 10,000. It's about $103,000 that will be cut out of the Warren Articles. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. Then Article 12 will appear on the ballot in March as it was presented here. Article 13, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 39000 $300 to be added into the property tax mat capital reserve fund. This sum to come from the fund balance and no amount to be raised from tax from taxation. Recommended Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by Budget Committee 4-1. And I believe Harold's comments apply to this, that they had cut that. Any comments? Article, seeing no hands. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I just have a question. It, that's okay. Sue so Longley, you could probably hear me without this thing. Um, as I read through all capital reserves, every article except for this one has a date when the capital reserve fund was started. When did we start number uh, article 13? The property you mean tax. the property tax map capital it reserve was last fund? Year. Okay, good question. And how much is in? How much did we put in last year? I'm sorry. 39,000 went last year, too. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Any other questions on that? Sandra. Um, Patsy, how much has been expended from that um, 39000 from last year? I think we expended that. Then you get This article, we spent 4000 uh, this past year as a 10% uh, down payment. Uh, this is a continuation of our GES project. Um, that it's a three, basically it's three years. This will probably be on the article again next year. Uh, instead of asking for the appropriation through taxation, we're asking for it to take out of the unassigned fund balance. Um, and it's 39,300 based off split up over three years. My other question is, isn't there a line item also in the budget for? There is not. Thank you. There is a, there is I thought there was, but. but that's, that's, a paper, that's for the paper, um, the way it's being done now. This project is the GIS mapping project where your, your property cards will be online. Um, you know, you have the, I don't know, if you look into other towns, other towns, they have. You, you can see uh, butters and everything like that. It's just, a, it's a, this is a huge project that um, is, we have, um, got cardiographics from Littleton that are working on it. What's the total cost? The total cost is? Well, what's 39? 120? 120? That's it. Okay. So, so over $100,000, the, the total cost of the project, and it won't be complete for another couple of years, as far as I know. But the line, in the, the line in the budget is for, Tony does the mapping. He, he fixes our maps. I, I knew that there was two, one in the, in the budget as well as the um, Warren article. And I wanted to know the difference so that, you know, um, and I don't think very many of us do. If you look at the, the budget itself, there's one in the budget and there's the Warren article. And a lot of people would get confused and say, why should I vote for both? And that's kind of why I, I brought this up so that you can make up your own mind. 
question. Any other questions on Article 3? Seeing no hands, Article 13, I said 3. Article 13 will appear on the, on the, on the ballot as presented. Article 14, estimated tax impact, 10 cents. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be added to the fire department capital reserve fund established in 2013 for the purpose of repairing or purchasing fire department vehicles. Board of Selectmen recommended 5-0, recommended by Budget Committee 6-0. Any comments? Seeing none, Article 14 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 15, tax impact 10 cents. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 25,000 to be added into the Department of Public Works Capital Reserve established in 2016 for the purpose of vehicle or equipment Purchase, replacement, or repairs. Board of Selectmen 5 0 recommended, recommended by budget 6 0. Any comments or questions? Chief Randall. This is how we replace the vehicles at the police department. We've tried many methods over the years that I've been here. I think you're on the wrong one. This is public works. <laughs> Excuse me. I was going to say, interesting, so this is how you buy the police vehicle. We're going to forget that Tony approached it. Does anybody have anything on, on this? Okay, Article 15 will appear as presented. Article 16, tax impact 10 cents to take two to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 25000 to be added into the Police Department Capital Reserve Fund established in 2013 for the purpose of repairing or purchase file police department vehicles. Board of Select 5-0 recommended, recommended Budget Committee 4-2. Over to Chief Randall. Maybe I was trying to get Craig's job away from him. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Um, I speak on this article every year. This is how we've chose in town to fund purchasing new police vehicles through our capital reserves, through our capital improvement, and this is the way that we've been doing it. It's been working excellent. Um, we keep a rotation on our vehicles. I will tell you that this year, talking with the selectmen and us talking about our capital reserves and our needs at the police department, we felt that we could reduce it by $5,000. Last year we had 30,000. We looked at the money that we do have. We're about to replace another vehicle that we've had for over eight years. And um, the, it's gonna go down, but we have a couple of years to build that back up to buy the next vehicle. So I felt it was appropriate with the situation with the taxes in town that we reduce this to help do our little part at the police department to um, soften the blow for everything that's coming down the, down the road. Um, I would wish that everybody would uh, support this article. I know there's going to be tough decisions that have to be made come voting day, but this one I really have worked my whole career that I've been here, the 10 years, on trying to get the vehicle situation figured out at the town of Ashland. I think we finally got a handle on it. And I just don't want to throw that hard work all away. So please vote for this article. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Any other comments? I would just like to thank Chief Heath and Chief Randall and Department Director Craig Moore. Uh, there's about $40,000 out of this budget that was shaved between those three individuals for equipment that takes a beating every day out here in these streets of Ashland. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Okay, Article 16 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Article 17, tax impact, eight cents. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be added into the Ashland Library Building Capital Reserve Fund established in 2015 for the purpose of purchasing, building, and or renovating a facility, including furnishing, furnishing and equipment for the Ashland Town Library. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0. Recommended by Budget 4-2. Anybody have any comments? I'm assuming Alice is going to make some comments. 
Hi, I'm Alice Staples, chair of the Ashland Town Library Trustees. I'd like to thank the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee for supporting our warrant article to add $20,000 to our library building capital reserve fund. We've been fortunate in the past that the voters have supported this, and we're asking that you vote for this this year as well. We figured out at our library trustee meeting that the library has been in the same building for 80 years now in 2019. So we feel like it's probably, that's a long time for the library to have been in that building with no additions and no modernization while obviously the town has changed and libraries have most certainly changed over that 80 years. Uh, you'll notice also that we don't have a bond issue this year to purchase the old school. The school is still for sale and at a bargain price. We've continued to meet with the Tri-County Cap Administration, they own the building now, to try and negotiate an agreement that would be in the best interest of the town. We continue to see the old school as a perfect location to continue the excellent services and resources that the library provides the town and as a perfect place to enhance those services with more space and more resources. Every increase to the capital reserve fund decreases the cost of a new or renovated library in the future. And again, thank you for supporting the Ashland Town Library. Thank you, Alice. Any other comments? Seeing no hands, Article 17 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 18, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 5,000 to be added into the building maintenance and repair capital reserve fund for the purpose of maintaining and repair all town buildings. Recommended by your board of selectmen, 5-0. Recommended by budget committee, 4-2. Any comments? Go ahead. I'd like to make an amendment to this article to add building and grounds maintenance. Um, building stands with parking lots around the trees that fall down and all sorts of other things. And if you don't make it clear that it includes the entire property owned by the town and not just the buildings. So. Oh, need to write it down. There is another Warren article on grounds, Article 20. Article 20, so what are you doing? You made a motion, what, are you taking your motion? Rescind the motion that hasn't been written yet, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Article 18 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 19, tax impact, eight cents, to see if the town will authorize the establishment of a capital reserve fund to meet our constitutional and statutory requirement that assessments are at full and true value at least as often as every fifth year. Furthermore, to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 towards this purpose and appoint the selectmen as agents to expend from the fund, it is anticipated the revaluation will take place in 2024 Recommended by the Board of Select 5-0. Recommended by Budget Committee 4-2. Comments or questions? Seeing no hands, Article 19 will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 20, to see if the town will vote to change the purpose of the existing building maintenance and repair fund to the building maintenance and grounds capital reserve fund further to name the Board of Selectmen as agents to expend from said fund. Two-thirds majority required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0. Not recommended by the Budget Committee 3-3. Mr. Wolf. The town office, the old jail, booster club building, the ball field, campground, town beach grounds, DPW area and fire station, all are aging town owned buildings and grounds. The furred ground maintenance has resulted in dead and decaying trees, poor drainage issues, and overgrowth of 
invasive vegetation such as Japanese knotweed, or as some people call bamboo, oriental bittersweet, and poison ivy. Many of these issues had to be addressed by outside professionals because the problem could not be addressed because of the lack of man hours, specialized equipment, and the expertise needed to operate that equipment. This, this warrant article is to add the word grounds to the building maintenance capital reserve fund, not increase in the budget line. It's to recognize the complete package of buildings and the grounds that they occupy, the trees and vegetation that must be maintained for safety, comfort, liability, and the aesthetics of the uses of these areas. Thank you, Kathleen. So did that handle your, okay. Just wanted to check. Article 20 will appear on the ballot as presented, Article 21. No tax impact. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $55,000 for the purpose of installing a new truck scale at the transfer station. This sum to come from the fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0. Not recommended by the Budget Committee 4-2. Any comment? Craig? I, I just want to um, make everybody aware why um, we want to put the scales down there at the transfer station. Um, some of you may know when, when people bring construction debris in or shingles, the load is estimated by the attendant. Um, so it's very difficult for him to figure out how much that weighs. Uh, we pay by the pound for the things we send out. So I think one time last summer I was able to actually um, get enough money to pay for that load. Uh, by the fees that are collected down there. So the scales is something that you'll, you'll bring a load in if you bring in a truckload of two by fours and you'll go on the scale. Uh, you'll get weighed for what you're paying for and it'll cover my costs down there. So it's gonna actually save money if we vote for this article. I know we're using the unassigned fund balance to pay for it. But going forward, I'm probably gonna save, you know, I can't tell you exactly how much, but it's gonna be thousands of dollars every year. Um, so they'll pay for themselves, could be in the first year if we do it right, um, th but then it opens up a whole avenue of other things that we could do if, once we have these scales down there. So uh, just encourage everybody to, to vote yes for that article. Thank Thanks you. for the additional information. Harold? I'd just like to speak to this uh, more so as a citizen than a select board member. Um, I travel a lot with my businesses, and on um, more than one occasion, I can tell you that I've been blessed to travel down 132 and, and see construction trucks come out of New Hampton instead of turning left and going 100 yards to the New Hampton transfer station where they have a scale. They come down to Ashland to save money. So that money they're saving is costing all of you folks sitting here right now. Thank you very much. Good point. The... Um Article 21 will appear on the uh, ballot as presented. Article 22, see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $43,400 for the purpose of erecting a building structure for storage at the transfer station. This sum to come from the fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. Recommended by your Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by Budget Committee 4-2. Mr. Moore. Uh, so, so this um, is to replace the, um, if you, any of you have been down to the transfer station, we have some trailers that hold our recycling bales. Um, <clears throat> one of them collapsed last year and we, we built a roof on it to, to shed the water and snow off. The other one's about ready to collapse, it's all uh, caving in. Uh, so we, we're fixing it, we're maintaining it, but I think these are, I think they're original to when the, the building was put. So the floors are very weak. Um, so we want to replace the two storage trailers down there with a tent-like structure. It's all um, built for the New England weathers. Um, it's 30 years plus, and it's one of those tents with a steel structure um, that, you know, you've seen them around. Plymouth has one. Um, what we're going to do is store all our recycling materials, and you guys have all heard the 
The recycling now is very difficult, and we're going to continue to recycle down there, but we need to hold the product that we recycle, that we bail longer. So what used to take me a, you know, a week or two to get rid of is now taking three or four months to get rid of. Um, so we have to sit on the product longer to actually make money on it. Um, so I'm running out of storage space down there anyway, and the stuff can't be, it can't sit out in the weather. It has to be under cover. Uh, so this building, it's not going to take, it's going to be right behind the um, transfer station where, where you go in and bring your stuff. And it's, it's sort of like a temporary tent structure, but it's guaranteed for 30 years. So it's going to allow us to um, store all our recycling materials in that and eliminate the need of the trailers. Thank you. Thank you. Mark. I'm not against these articles. I wonder how much money is in the fund, fund balance. Where, where does that come from, the fund balance? Good question. Somebody answer. <clears throat> the unassigned fund balance, we have about 900, Fran, I think you say? About a little bit slightly, 850, 900,000. Uh, we're at about 12%. See, DRA recommends that we have between 5 and 17% of unassigned fund balance. Um, in 900 give us about we're about 12 percent was some of that used to reduce the tax rate it was last year it was last year what about this year uh, About 2018 the selectman decided not to uh based on trying to keep at our recommended yeah. suggested levels well my tax bill shows it Why not? <coughs> thank you david Um, there are, the unassigned fund balance is, is really an accumulation of, of the extra funds that are left over at the end of the year that are not spent. And it also includes um, the amount of money that, uh, of unpaid taxes. So it's not, it's not all cash, so people should understand it, but it's like extra money you keep in your checking account. Um, The problem with using the unassigned fund balance to lower the tax rate is that that's only good for one year. And the next year, the taxes go right back up to where they were. If you use those funds on equipment, um, in the long term, you help stabilize the tax rates and you actually help lower the tax rates if you do the analysis as we, we did when we did the capital improvement plan. In fact, all of, every time you put money in the capital reserve, you're saving money in the long run. The reason your taxes are not higher than they are right now is because we have put money away to replace equipment that is, is now wearing out and is going to be wearing out in the future. And we have that money to pay cash for those things. We don't pay interest. We don't have to raise any more taxes in order, in order to do that. So okay. um, there is a lot of savings here. And, the, and one of the things that you see here, too, is the unassigned fund, fund balance allows the select board to have the flexibility to pay for equipment, pay for buildings, pay for expenses that we need to pay for, and still keep the taxes fairly, fairly stable. Yeah, we all know that the taxes are going up, but we have let a lot of things go in town and now it's catching up with us. So that's why your taxes are going up, because we haven't planned as well as we should, but we're on our way towards doing that. Thanks. Rick. It's interesting that the first five articles here took us two hours. We breezed through the next 15, we're all the way up to 20. The less red there is on this piece of paper, the conversation goes easier because A, it's very transparent as to what the mission is. The money is for whatever. To to stand here and say that, that we're putting away money to defray cost, 
I've got already been taxed on that dollar, all right? So if I get taxed on that dollar today or next year, I'm still paying the tax. So it's not free money. It's not all of a sudden appearing from anyone, from any different article other than the fact that it's tax dollars that run spent. At everybody's house once a year, at the end of the month, you figure out how much money you have left over. There's probably a bill that needs to be paid or whatever like that, which you can't, that 800,000, whatever the number that was just flipped around here, earlier at $260,000 decreases my tax bill a dollar. Well, if we got eight or 900,000 dollars, then there's a couple of dollars a thousand on the tax rate. So basically there again, I'm all about transparency and spending money. We all know we got bills to pay. We all know we have obligations and needs to be met. But on the other hand, we can't additionally put monies, take monies out of the pockets of the taxpayers in anticipation. You know, it, it's pretty simple too when you think about it. You take this very nice handout that the Waterworks Department gave us. The second line on the septic receiving station says the steel building has been purchased, it is on site. I applaud that initiative that we're moving forward. Increased cost, the cost of the steel building increased about $25,000 due to the taxation of steel tariffs. I work for a, I work for a manufacturer that bought 20 million tons of U.S. steel last year. So the timing of taxation directly affected our pricing on equipment that we sold. But where was the, was the steel building here before the taxation came in? And if the contract was signed before the taxation went into place, and it more than likely was, my assumption, then we should be asking the vendor why we paid an additional $25,000. Okay, thank you for your input. Any more comments on Article 22? The building structure. Yes. Hi, Amanda Loud. My question is, how much is the town of Ashland making on recycling? Because this is a $43,400 expense to store recyclable materials. I ask that because several of their surrounding towns have stopped doing recycling. Now, don't get me wrong, I am all for protecting the environment and recycling. That's not my point, but my point is how cost effective is recycling in Ashland? And is it possible that in the next few years we may join other towns, such as Waterville Valley, that have stopped recycling because it simply isn't financially feasible? Greg. Well, um, first of all, I'm not sure what Rick was saying. That has nothing, the building that I want has nothing to do with water and sewer. Okay, I thought we were talking about this article. Yeah, we are. So we are whatever Rick about. said, it doesn't have anything to do with water. Right. It's to water right. and sewer. This is we're talking the transfer about station. One. To answer your question, um, I'm not sure it's the, the exact number. We, we do make money. Um, every time I send out a load of cardboard, I make about $1,200, $1,300. Um, cans, you know, we make we make a bale of cans. Uh, it's two or three hundred dollars per bale. Um, that adds up. It goes into the general fund and all that. It doesn't go to the transfer station. Goes into the general fund. However, if we didn't, um, it cost me about sixty-seven dollars a ton to get rid of your household garbage. If we paid to have that all dumped into one container, it would go up to $97 a ton to get rid of it. So by you, everybody recycling here, it's, it's actually we're saving money by recycling. Um, so we could, we could stop doing it. I still have to have two attendants down there because one person can't work alone. So they might as well bail the product and we might as well get what we can. Um, we do save money. So if I put it all into one, it's gonna cost 90 bucks if I can get money for it. At least I'm generating some revenue. The biggest gener revenue generator is probably the cardboard and the steel cans, but if all that went into the garbage, along with all the can uh, jars, the little glass jars, that would add so much more weight. Um, so you'd be paying a lot more money for you not to recycle. Um, it's, it is still cost effective, it's still cheaper. However, to get rid of it, I have to hold it a lot longer. So. It's just gonna, it's, we, we're gonna work through it, um, but a lot of towns, Ashland's unique. 
that we're small enough to not get rid of our recycling program. Places like Laconia and the bigger cities, imagine how many bales of cardboard they have, they, they bale a day. They'd have to have an enormous structure to, to store all that, the bales that they make. So we're kind of unique, we're kind of small enough where we can still afford to keep our product undercover. And that's why I want the building. If we were much bigger like Laconia or in Meredith, we probably might look at not doing it too because it's just a lot of storage. Okay. So we're small enough to handle it right now. Did, did that answer your question? Thank you. Article 22 then will appear on the ballot as presented. Article 23, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate 17,500 for the purpose of purchasing two compact containers at the transfer station. This sum to come from the fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. Recommended Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by Budget Committee 4-2. Any comments on that? Craig. So I just, just want to let everybody know, these are the, when you go down to the transfer station, you throw your, your trash and your stuff away. These are the containers that the trucks haul up to Bethlehem. And they're very old. Um, we've had Lee we repair them over and over again, so they're starting to rust out. Um, they're bad enough to the point where um, the truck driver is saying to me that I'm probably not going to haul this anymore because he's afraid it's going to rust through. Wow. And the truck driver's responsible for what he puts on his truck. So we're kind of getting forced into, I need to replace these. So. It's to replace the compactor where you dump your stuff and then the open top construction debris container. That's, that's all it is. Thank you. Article 23 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Article 24, no tax impact. To see if the town will vote to establish a contingency fund for the current year for unanticipated expenses that may arise and further to raise and appropriate $25,000 to go into that fund. This sum to come from fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. Any appropriation left in the fund at the end of the year will lapse into the to the general fund. Majority vote required. Recomm recommended by your board of selectmen 5-0, not recommended by budget committee 3-3. Three, three. Does anybody have any? Questions or comments? Lee? I just want to, I'd just like to point out and clarify that this is not earmarked for anything specific at all. It's for any anticipated um, expense that comes up in town from any department, the town office, and like the articles we've spoken about previously, it would come out of the fund balance, and if it's not expended, it goes back, rolls over back into the general fund. So it does not, um, it is not specifically earmarked for anything. Thank you. Jeanette. Um, when we had our budget committee, uh, and Charlie was there, the town administrator, he had said that one of the reasons for this is because they will need it for legal, uh, because, um, their legal line was way, way over because I, th I believe it's four lawsuits pending right now. So I just want to let the voters know that that is, you know, some of that will be used for legal expense. The, uh, the other question I have, Charlie, you can probably answer this. If it's coming out of the fund balance, why does it say, and further, to raise and appropriate 12000 Because you're not raising it and appropriating it. I mean, I don't understand why it's worded that way. If it's coming out of the fund balance. 25, you said 12,000. I'm sorry, 25. But you've got raise and appropriate, and, and the townspeople are not raising that money, you're taking it from the fund. Can the attorney answer that? Uh, 
first of all, I would point out that there were other articles that we've already discussed that used the language raised and appropriated, and yet the money was to come out of the fund balance. I think this is just the wording here is just uh, uh, a function of the fact that all budgeting is gross budgeting, and if you want to spend money in a given year, you have to raise and appropriate it. Uh, the, the entire amount, whether it's coming out of the fund balance or being raised by taxation. Thank you. Any other questions? Sh Sherry? No. I didn't, sorry, I didn't see your hand. Um, I also wanted to bring it to people's attention that the town administrator did say at our budget meeting that this warrant was brought forth because of legal expenses. Um, like someone else mentioned, we have some legal things going on, but those were his words that that was, yes, they could spend it on anything, but they were anticipating spending it on their legal. Last year, uh, we asked for $5,000 extra to be used for legal that the budget committee didn't provide in our budget. The comments that were generally made was, since it was over, that, <clears throat> excuse me, we went over last year with the legal line, that, it, that was an example that we could use for unanticipated expenses. The purpose of this unanticipated fund balance is to protect the budget because we came across a lot of expenses this year that weren't in our budget. Legal is just an example of that what it could be used for. The, the tree removal was another example. Uh, Parks and Rec had to cut down $10,000 worth of trees this year. It wasn't in our budget. That was another example that was given at the budget committee meeting. Okay, I'm gonna recognize Sandra on this one. At the Budget Committee, I was the one who approached the subject as to why uh, this amount of money as a contingency fund and what it would be used for. And the town administrator said specifically that it would be used for legal. And I had said it can be used for anything if a car runs into a building that is owned by the town, that contingency fund could be used to repair that building. He said no, it was going to be specifically used for legal because it was going to be needed this year because the legal line was not increased by the budget committee and it will be needed because of the lawsuits. Okay, Lee. I just want to say for anyone who's concerned about legal lines, the budgets, the bottom lines, that they go into the library of the town hall and they pull out town reports from, I'd say, starting 2011. And you can look at those lines and the bottom lines and itemize bills in town hall and you can see what those lines are being spent for and that historically it is overexpended practically every single year and has been since we've had a town attorney. Our costs are not individual. We pay a flat fee to our attorney every month. And I will also point out and clarify for whatever you may have heard on the street, this board sitting here did not start any litigation this year. Thank you. Sherry. I just want to note that Sandra, is, that is the way I remember it. I believe it's in the minutes that way. And yes, we did have the discussion that it could be spent on anything else, but the town administrator was very adamant that, and I believe that I asked the question at least two or three times. You said that that was the purpose, but yes, you could spend it on anything else. But okay. it was for your legal funds right. that you're in trouble. Motion to call the question. Article 24 will appear on the ballot as written and presented today. Article 25, tax impact 22 cents 
to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $55,000 to be added to the fire department salary line for the purpose of staffing two per diem firefighters with no benefits during the daytime at the fire station. Recommended by the Board of Select 150, recommended by Budget Committee 42. Chief E. Okay, where to start? <clears throat> Our current roster in the fire department stands at 29. Of those 29, five of them work in town, including myself as one of the five. We are noticing an increasing vulnerability for manpower during the daytime hours. And it is my job as fire chief to point out to the people that we serve of this issue and move forward and find a resolution to it. In the interim, I am proposing this Warren article for the purpose of putting two per diem firefighter EMTs in the station between 8 o'clock and 5 o'clock seven days a week to be sure that we get the calls answered. We've noticed a disturbing trend uh, over the last five, six years, uh, starting back in 2012 when we had one, one call that was not responded to by any Ashland uh, units. Uh, in 2017, that number was 26. In 2018, it was 23. I believe that the, the, the largest single contributor to that is the lack of daytime manpower. And uh, two, of the, two, of the people, two of the other people that are on here that work in town during the day work for the Department of Public Works. And for example, if they're out plowing during a storm, not likely they're gonna be able to leave that job to come deal with a call at the fire station. Uh, we're not alone as a community in this issue. You know, the towns all around us are facing the same problem and they have gone this route. I've spent a great deal of time this year talking with uh, San Brinton, uh, Bridgewater, Campton Thornton, and a number of other communities that have faced this problem and have dealt with it in their own way. And my proposal, again, is to initiate on July 1st, staffing the station seven days a week with two firefighter EMTs to see that we can get, get a truck out of the station, particularly in a medical. Uh, and, I, and again, I don't mean to be an alarmist or sound like one, and I apologize for that. But so far, we have not, there's not been an issue where it had a negative outcome on the call because we didn't get a truck out, okay? But I can't guarantee that going forward, and I feel that it's my responsibility to point this out, and as a community, we figure out how we're going to deal with it. But in the meantime, this is my proposal. Thank you for the extra information. I have um, a question for, for Steve. This warrant or this article is being presented this year. Does that mean that it will have to be presented every year? Or is that your plan? Actually, I'm not sure it would have to be presented next year. Uh, this year is for half of a year, mm -hmm. okay, starting July 1st. Uh, if this does help resolve the issue, then I would probably present uh, it next year and not assume that it's part of the salaries line every year. It would be represented for the amount that it would take to, to fund that for the entire year, which then would possibly become that. But I think it's important to keep bringing it back here as opposed to just, you know, putting it in the salaries line and hoping that it slides through. I think it's important that, again, as I said, that we solve this issue as a, as a community. And, uh, I know there are a lot of people, I pay taxes too, I, I get it, I understand what the issues are. But at the same time, as I say, it's, we, we need to decide as a community what level of protection we want and how we're going to go about providing that. And I, I can't keep ignoring the fact that we have call, these calls that aren't being handled. The numbers that you presented are, are um, 
I don't want to say alarming, but they're significant. And I'm thinking as if this is going to be a warrant or an article that's going to have to be presented every year, could we not maybe staff the fire department with two more people without this article? Uh, Kurt, but I, I have, uh, I, I left an important piece out of this actually. I have from time to time staffed the station in the past the, uh, the salaries line has allowed me to do that, particularly during storms mm -hmm. or during uh, power outages. Mm -hmm. We staff the station and we, uh, and we uh, take a list that's provided by the electric department and we check on the people who are dependent on electricity for their medical equipment mm -hmm. and we make sure they're okay and we move them to the fire station if that's necessary. Uh, so we, we have on occasion staffed the, sta uh, the station. One piece I left out is I, I think a common myth is that firefighters in a fire station on duty sit there and wait for a call okay and, and I they don't okay any place I've ever worked any time I've worked pretty in myself in other towns uh, there's a, a a list of duty that you perform every day these people would uh, would be responsible for daily truck checks for repairs maintenance of the building uh, inspections and all the other tasks that that needs to be done that we currently hold work details to accomplish. Hose testing, okay, equipment testing, equipment maintenance that needs to be done. And right now we use either some of our training time to do that or we have work details and we have people coming in over the weekend and so forth to, to spend time on those. If one reason, and one of the reasons that I went with this proposal this year this way is I'm not, to be honest, I'm not absolutely sure what we're going to save by doing it. I anticipate there's gonna be savings in that we won't be holding those work details and those other you know, special details to get that work done. It'll be done by the people in the station on a daily basis. You know, Steve, I think education is very important, you know, for the residents in this town to know what your department does and if these two, people that you're going to put on staff is going to do all the details or, or the work that may be taken away from training. You know, I think that's great, but to take away training, I mean, I, I believe then all of us need an education because you're getting a lot of calls and I know you're the only one at the station. You need, you need staffing. And I would be one as a member of the budget committee Certainly to pass that if that was a line item. Mr. Lamos. Long before I served on any board or committee in this town, um, I was very fortunate that this town had a well-staffed fire department. Um, in the fall of 2013, winter of 2013, I had a chimney fire. And I placed a call, four and a half minutes later, I had two trucks in my front yard. Seven people responded. Out of those seven people, five of them are no longer either employed or living in this town. That concerns me. If I had to make that phone call again, the difference of my house standing or someone not coming concerns me. So I hope that you folks can support Chief Heath in this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Article 25, will it, oh, sorry, Chief Randall. I just wanna tell everybody that I support this, okay? We respond to the same calls that the fire department does. Whether they go on a fire call or a med call, um, we, we usually get there before they do. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that the police department, we just had our training, which the fire department put on for us so that we're all certified we have to do it every two years for our CPR and AED use. But when it comes to the medical calls that we go to, there is no more disturbing, sinking feeling that you don't have the equipment to save these people. We can do basic life safety, but that's it. And I've been on a number of calls where they were toned, toned, retoned, and people are asking me, where are they? They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. So I would say we need to support something. If he thinks this is gonna work, we at least need to try it, okay? 
we respond to the same calls they do. Sometimes we don't go to some of the medicals because we're tied up with our own stuff and I've only got one guy working and he has to deal with what he has to deal with. But I've been on those calls where the tone and retone and retone it. And, and I agree, most people are not locally working anymore and his staff is not here to deal with it. And something I do believe needs to be done about it. Whether this is the right answer, and certainly Chief I know has looked into it. We have conversations all the time about response time and stuff like that. And I'll just tell you I support um, this warrant article to try to do something about giving the people the service that they, they actually expect it. They expect this service and a service comes with a cost to it. But hopefully it's just not our loved one or somebody um, when they can't get there in time. Thank you. Article 25 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Article 26, no tax impact, Ashland Conservation Commission to see if the town will vote to reduce the Ashland Conservation Commission membership from five to three. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to zero. Recommended by Budget Committee, three to one. Mr. Lamos. I ask for your support on this warrant. Um, I was a member of the Ashland Conservation Commission for approximately five or six years. Um, at this time, we have two members. Therefore, we don't have a quorum. Um, we cannot conduct business. We cannot uphold any of the guidelines of DES sets forth. Um, anything on the lake with building or docks or any water protection action, we cannot do because we do not have a quorum. By reducing the number from five to three, um, you can get this commission up and going again and keep protecting our environment. Our environment shouldn't have to pay because we can't get people to fill seats. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Article 26 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Now we're starting the petition warrant articles. Article 27, no tax impact. Petition town manager. Do you favor adoption of town manager plan as provided in ch chapter 37 of the revised statutes annotated? Does anyone want to speak to this? I don't know who initiated it, if they're here to speak. Okay, seeing no, Article 27 will appear as presented. Article 28, no tax impact. Petition, Board of Selectmen membership to see if the town will vote to change the select board from five selectmen to three selectmen. Is it? Go ahead. I guess my question basically is, is there's a statutory uh, wording for this kind of warrant, and I don't think it's worded correctly. Is that correct, Mr. Puffer? You have to ask for a decrease. Yeah, for, I would say 418D uh, says the question shall read, quotes, are you in favor of decreasing the board of selectmen to three members, end quotes. Isn't that the language you have there? No, this is a petition article. See, somebody. Right, but it says to see if the town. To see if uh, the town oh, will vote. Okay, yeah. They said to change and it said yeah. to decrease. Yeah, um, right. It also says to see if the town, as opposed to are you in favor, but I'm not going to worry about that one. Um, Those are the differences. Yeah. Um, a, a change from five to three is a decrease, so I wouldn't worry about the, the validity of it, but, but uh, you could change that if you want, to change the word uh, from change to decrease. Thank you. Any other, any other? We did have a public hearing on it. Lisa?
would the petitioner have to be Can the one? Can you speak to the? I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Would the petitioner have to be the one that would have to change any, make any amendments to this? No. Okay. No, anybody. All right. This, this meeting can change it. As long as you don't change the intent of the, correct? As long as you don't change the intent of the Warren article. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Article 27, I'm sorry, 28 will appear as presented. Article 29, tax impact four cents, petition to Warren article. Pemmy Baker Community Health to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $9,700 for Pemmy Baker Community Health. Recommended by your Board of Selectmen, 4 1. Recommended by your Budget Committee, 4 1 1. Comments? Seeing no hands, art Petition Article 29 will appear on your ballot as discussed. Petition Article 30, estimated tax payment, tax impact, I'm sorry, two cents, Grafton County Senior Citizens Council, Inc. Shall the voters raise and appropriate $6,000 to Grafton County Senior Citizens Council, Inc. for services for Ashland residents in 2019, recommended by your Board of Selectmen, 4-1, recommended by the Budget Committee, 6-0. Comments? Seeing no hands, Petition Article 30 will appear as discussed. Art petition Article 31, Tax Impact, one cent, Lakes Region Mental Health Center. Shall the voters raise and appropriate 3,500 to Lakes Region Mental Health Center for the delivery of emergency mental health serv services? Recommended by your Board of Selectmen, 4-1. Recommended by the Budget Committee, 6-0. Questions? Seeing no hands, Article 31 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Petition Article 32, one cent, Tri-County Community Action, Grafton County. Shall the voters raise and appropriate $3,107 for the Tri-County Community Action, Grafton County for the purpose of continuing services of the fuel assistance program for the residents of Ashland. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 4-1. Recommended by the Budget Committee, 6-0. Any questions? Seeing no hands, Article 32 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Petition Article 33, one cent tax impact. Voices Against Violence. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 3000 dollars for the fiscal year 2018-2019 to support Voices Against Violence, a nonprofit crisis center and shelter providing emergency shelter court and hospital accompaniment and general support to women, men, and children who are victims of domestic and sexual violence and stalking. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4-1, recommended by the Budget Committee 6-0. Seeing no hands, Article 33 will appear on your ballot. Petition Article 34. The meeting's still going on, folks, if you can kind of, I only have two left. Petition Article 34, one cent, day away program, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,500 for the day away program. Not, not recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 3-2, recommended by the Budget Committee, 5-0-1. Any comments, questions? I'd like to talk about the Day Away program. I started this program five years ago, and it's held in Bristol, but it's four surrounding communities. And as of today, I have had 38 clients that have attended Day Away. And it's a program for those who have Alzheimer's or dementia. It's held one day a week, and it's held on Thursday. And it's called Day Away, but we have a wonderful time. It's a matter of crafts, it's um, an exercise, lunching, we have pet therapy, we have people who come in to give lectures and also to play. 
I've had a lot of bands come in. We, we do, we have a lot of fun. And not only does it socialize for the person who has dementia, but it also gives their caregiver that day to do anything that they want to do. And I know I've noticed that the Board of Selectmen do not recommend this article, but there have been several people from Ashland that I have interviewed. Unfortunately, there is a criteria that you have to meet, and some people just don't meet that criteria. But it is a good, good program. Thank you. The other thing is, too, they are all volunteers. They don't get paid. They're all volunteers to help these people out, to play games with them, to socialize with them. If they need help going to the restroom, they help them do that. So just remember, they're all volunteers. They are not paid. Thank you. Thanks, Jeanette. I forgot that. Seeing no other article, Petition Article 34 will appear on the ballot as discussed. Petition Article 35, one cent, estimated tax impact, communities for alcohol, drug free youth. Katie, shall the voters raise and appropriate $1,000 for communities for alcohol and drug free youth? Katie, a nonprofit organization serving Ashland and nearby towns. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 4 1. Recommended by your budget committee, 6 0. Any comments? Seeing no hands, Article 35 will appear on the ballot as, as uh, mentioned. And, and Patsy has an announcement. Sorry. Is that on camera? Can I, can <laughs> I have the, may I have this dance? <laughs> um, Tuesday, the February 5th, I think that's the 5th, is the, uh, the deliberative session for the school district. Unfortunately, the, the board has it on the same night as the Pemmy Baker Regional High School budget, but a um, huge part of your taxes are, is the school budget. Last year, we had one person there, and I acted as moderator, and the meeting lasted three minutes. So hopefully some of you can show up and just um, ask a few questions. That's at 6.30 at the school cafeteria. Thank you. Do you have a comment, an additional comment? Well, usually in the traditional uh, town meeting, there was always the, the last one where somebody could make any kind of comments. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Selectman Lamos for his service to this town as he's not re-upping for another term and he's moving across the border to New Hampton. <laughs> And thank him for his work with the Conservation Commission and all that he's done for this town. Thank you. This concludes your deliberative session. Thank you for keeping me as the town moderator. <laughs>